Gordon, have you ever tried a vuvuzela? No. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> It's not as easy as it looks, right? No. <laughs> it's hard, you know? It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> so now imagine thousands of these in a stadium. Tens of thousands. <laughs> South Africa. Now, where do you see yourself in two years? <laughs> now, this is a major milestone. One of many. We're celebrating exactly two years until the next World Cup. We're very excited to partner with Qatar again to share a little bit more about the World Cup. So thanks so much to Qatar for sponsoring this video and believing in our work. Now, what should actually be happening? <laughs> Well, but in reality, this is the only bag we can pack at the moment as well. It's still 2020. Yeah. We can't make it to Qatar this year. Unfortunately, travel restrictions are still in place. So instead, we're going to share a little bit of what's ahead when it comes to the World Cup. I can't create my travel guides in Qatar yet, but I can show how you can also join the road to 2022. Did you know that you can also take pictures like this, even if you don't go to Qatar? That was it, baby. Not shopping for Black Friday yet. <laughs> Are there tickets available for Black Friday? No, <laughs> for the World Cup, no. <laughs> Only when it's closer to the World Cup. And I don't think it'll be a Black Friday deal, baby. <laughs> okay, so we're here. And the World Cup is here. We got all this time, two years right here. And there's a lot of things going on in between. For example? We'll have a new ball. <laughs> We're both bad, baby. That's about it. Let's start here now with the countdown to our favorite fan moment. So number six, the ball. This was the one in Russia, the Telstar 18. Color for black and white. Match balls have changed a lot over the decades. When we think about football, we normally think of the traditional black and white ball with pentagons and hexagons, right? But that was the official ball only in 1970 and 1974, which, by the way, was called Telstar. This Telstar here is a homage to the original. When it comes to match balls, not only the design changes, but a lot of research and technology goes into creating them. Well, maybe not that one. But this ball here has a microchip and you can actually connect to the ball from your phone. See, it connected. Then this page here opens. Not much more happens after that, you know, but who knows in the future? I have high expectations for Qatar as the World Cup of technology. Now, we can't anticipate in what order things will happen here, but we can also expect number five, a new... Song. Song, yeah. Taminamina, eh, eh, waka, waka, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> this is this. <laughs> okay, sing your favorite now. No, you do it. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Ale, ale, ale. Go, go, go. Ale, ale, ale. <laughs> your turn, Gordon. Come on. <laughs> you know what you deserve? <laughs> It's never just one song anymore, right? You have now the official song, official anthem. You have unofficial songs. Remember, an unofficial one that I loved. Oh, 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 oh. Waving flag. World Cup in South Africa, too. Amazing. Number four. Mascot. Today, every World Cup has a mascot, but it was not always like this. The tradition began in England, 1966. <laughs> the mascot is not just randomly chosen. You know, we represent a characteristic or an animal, for example, of the host country. My favorite 
Fulaco from Brazil. <laughs> it is so cute. It's an armadillo, a species that is native to Brazil. And uh, it's so unique because it can roll into a ball. And I remember that at the time it ended up raising awareness, you know, to this endangered species of armadillo. So nice, so cute. Number three, or would it be, how did the Germans do? Like this, right? I guess. Yeah, <laughs> or three, how do you prefer? Three! <laughs> For me, this should be number one. The ones everybody wants pictures with. Messi and Eva. The teams are obviously number one when the World Cup starts, but I'm talking about pre-games, you know, when the squads are announced, the new jerseys, new kits, all the designs, all the drama. <laughs> I found this article here in The Guardian that illustrates so well, you know, this history, and you can see the design changes. Look at this. Look at Spain, baby, how much it changed, the design, you see? Previous ones. And the color. Yeah, I remember Germany playing like this. It's not only about the design, you know, but today there's a lot of research that goes into creating the uniforms. Major brands are always trying to come up with something lighter, more breathable, that drives faster. This is what the little spheres here are for. Not a World Cup jersey, this pink, you know, it's my exercise shirt, but technology is the same. And when it comes to the squad, you know, there are always those cases that our players cut out in the very last moment when the World Cup is about to start, like weeks before. So there's all the drama involved. I feel so Oh, sorry for them. Okay, so before I share the last two, you know, my favorite and most anticipated milestones before the World Cup, let me share what we already know. The World Cup already has an emblem. The emblem was inspired by a traditional woolen shawl that is worn, you know, during winter in Qatar, and it is winter right there. It is their winter. And uh, it also has other meanings, like it resembles the trophy, also the infinity symbol. And the number eight. Yes, yes, and there are eight stadiums. The match schedule is ready too. Look at this, four matches every day, one, four, seven, and 10, local time. What's the weather like in Qatar now? Oh, I don't know, let me see here. Oh, look at this, 26 degrees wow. in Doha right now. And there should be a match going on right now. 26 degrees, really nice. Let's see what's the weather like here. Now, in Orlando, it's 23 degrees. <laughs> so it's close, it's going to be about the same thing. It's very comfortable, very nice. What's the next milestone after two years? Um, I'd say it's the qualifiers, you know, because they were delayed all over the world, because, you know, it's 2020. It's <laughs> so here in North America, in Europe, and in Oceania, they start in March 2021. And South America, Africa, and Asia, they have already started and will resume next year. The only country confirmed is Qatar, you know, as the host, as they qualify automatically. What about France? No, not even France. <laughs> They're the champions, but they have to fight. <laughs> What's what? number two? I'll get there. Number two, the trophy tour. You know, in recent World Cups, there was this tour to several countries all over the world with the real trophy. It's totally free to attend, and you can go there, they take the picture for you and give you this really nice souvenir to keep. I love it. You know, there's this whole tradition about the trophy, you know, because only former champions and heads of state can touch the trophy. I can't, you can't, nobody else can. Not even the staff, you know, you see the staff when they're preparing everything, they have to wear gloves, so it is really nice. It's good to keep an eye on the preparations, you know, and know when all this is going on. Follow Road to 2022 in English, because they'll probably announce it there. And finally, what I really look forward to is the draw the groups, you know. I love to know who's playing who, what's the opening match, if they are two big rivals in the same group. Oh, that drama. Some results that impacted me most. 2010, Portugal and Brazil on the same group. Oh no! And then Portugal again, 2018, Portugal and Spain on the same group. Portugal's not very lucky, huh? 2002, Argentina, England, Nigeria and Sweden. That was a tough group. Today the draw is huge, watched by millions of people all over the world, but it was not always the case. You know, it all started in 1990 in Italy. Before that, the draw was held in TV studios or government offices, hotels. Now you may think, 
I don't have money, I can never experience this. So let me share my story of how everything started for me. I was a volunteer in a club rural cop and that has literally changed my life, you know, in terms of opportunities, in terms of knowledge of how I see things. Uh, I started seeing that not even the sky is the limit. You know, I was 20 years old coming from a small town in Brazil and not knowing anyone in the industry. And at that moment, I knew that one day I'd work in a World Cup and that I would travel the world. And look at that, I'm here now talking about the World Cup and my next video is about this topic will hopefully be in Qatar creating travel guides. All my strength. Oops, whoops. Try again. Waka waka eh eh. You're getting the rhythm now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of work here. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who already sent me ideas of stories to do in Qatar. Remember my empty book? Look at it now. <laughs> here, each one here is a single video. <laughs> Look at how many. It'll take me multiple trips to cover all this. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thanks for all the comments and direct messages.